So today, I'm going to install an amplifier and subwoofer in my BMW 530e. The parts I'm using is a JL Audio TW3 D4 10-inch subwoofer with a JL Audio enclosure and a JL Audio JX500-1 Class D amplifier. The subwoofer, box, and grill come as a set and cost about $400 off eBay, and the amp was $230 off eBay. The JL Audio box has two different box types, one rectangular, and one with the angles, and you can choose your preference. I bought the wire kit and low light converter with base knob off Amazon. They were both under 20 bucks. Please support my YouTube page by using the links in the comments to purchase through Amazon or eBay. Keep in mind, if you want to add bass to your car, there's three different ways you can do it. You can A, just add an amplifier to your stock subwoofers, or B, change out your stock subwoofers and add an amplifier, or C, which is what I'm doing, adding and an extra subwoofer and amplifier. So the first thing I'm going to do is start removing all the plastic panels in the trunk that cover the battery terminal. So I pop out the ones I can and then I start looking around. There's clips all around the back trunk and I just uh, pop these off with a flathead screwdriver. So as you can see there's quite a few clips and if you want to remove the whole panel on the right hand side of your car don't forget to remove a clip on the very top. I happen to not remove this clip and I just bent it backwards because it was good enough for me, but in hindsight it would be way easier just to remove that whole right side panel. Keep in mind, when you're doing this installation, whether or not you're adding new subwoofers or just adding an amp to your existing subwoofers, the installation process is pretty much the same across most newer BMWs. I happen to do almost the exact same installation for my M4 where I just added an amplifier to the existing subwoofers. As far as how much bass you're going to add, if you just add an amplifier to your existing subwoofers, you'll probably get a range of 25 to 50% increase in bass, whereas if you add an amplifier and replace your stock subwoofers, you'll probably get double the amount of bass. And if you add an external subwoofer with amplifier, the options are limitless. So for this setup, I would estimate that my bass is more than double. So I have to remove the plastic trim in the rear of the trunk in order to get the bottom part of the right hand side off. Um, there's going to be, I believe, four clips that you have to take out and then you're going to have to pull straight up in order to get this plastic piece off. Once everything is removed, you can now push back the panel on the right to expose the battery. Once the battery is exposed, you can see that the red terminal is positive, the black is negative, and you can also see the ground point of the black wire to the frame of the car. I will reuse this point to ground my amplifier. Now that everything's exposed, I now need to work on getting the power cable and ground wire ready to be attached to the battery terminals. So first thing I do is I'm going to remove the fuse from the holder because I want to attach the fuse last when I'm ready to power on the subwoofer and amplifier. So the amplifier is going to happen to go on the cover that was on top of the battery terminal because it's off to the right hand side, it's out of the way, I could place stuff in the trunk without having worrying that I'm going to hit it or that if anything is going to scratch the amplifier. Plus the cover's removable so if I really am in a bind I could just move the amplifier somewhere else. So I take some wire cutters and I start trimming down the power cable. Obviously I need something really short to go from the terminal to the fuse so I cut about a foot length and then for the ground wire, um, it's a little bit longer, so I just cut two feet or two and a half feet just to give me a little wiggle room. And I attach that to the same ground point as the battery. Now we want to attach the power cord to the battery. First, make sure that the fuse is out of your power cable before attaching this. Next, unbolt the top nut on the power cord, which should be a 10 millimeter and then put it on top and screw it back in. Next, we have to attach the ground wire. In order to do this, just undo the nut that's attached to the frame of the car and place your own ground wire there. Make sure that you have enough slack so that you can move the amp around later if you want. Now that all your power cables are hooked up and ready to go, all you need to do now is put all the panels in the trunk back together and have the power and ground wires coming out of the last panel that covers the battery. So there are a few places that you can mount the amp. You can either mount it onto the box 
on the side of the trunk in one of the carpeted panels or on the flat um, panel that I did in my install. The reason why I chose this place was because it was easy to remove, easy to screw into, and it was also out of the way so when I place stuff in the trunk, I probably won't hit it. Now with the trunk complete, I moved on to hooking up the low line converter. So the first thing I did, since this was just for a subwoofer, I combined the two positive wires and the two negative wires together and soldered those together. I then soldered that to a speaker wire that was about five feet long and that's going to tap into one of the subwoofers that are located underneath the seat. Now in order to get the subwoofer we need to remove the seat. The first thing you want to do is push the seat all the way up and then there's two plastic fittings that cover the torque screws that you're going to need to get to to remove the seat. Uh, these plastic pieces are a little tricky to get off so you're going to want to pry out the sides a little bit and then push back to pop off the covers. Then you're going to need to grab a Torque 50 and take out the four bolts that are attaching the seat. Once our, all four bolts are out, all you have to do is lean the front seat backwards in order to view the speaker. Now for this speaker cover, there's four Torque screws holding this together. First you take out these four Torque screws and then once the panel is removed, you can see the plug where the subwoofer is. So here you have uh, two choices. You, un you can unplug it and tap the existing speaker wire, or you could have gone straight to the trunk to the amp and tapped it there. I chose the speaker because I, I didn't have a wire diagram of the amp, and this was the easiest method for me. Also, if you wanted to swap out the OEM speakers, here's your opportunity. You would just place a drop-in 8-inch subwoofer and hook this up to your own amp and then you would be set also. Once you have tapped the subwoofer speaker plug to your own speaker wire from your low line level converter, you, you can now tuck this wire up underneath the plastics on the side of the seat and run it back to the back seat area. Once the wire is in the back seat area, you're going to have to remove the back seat and place the extra line of the speaker wire and the extra RCA as well as your low line converter underneath the seat. Um, this is the easiest place to put it because you can store a bunch of extra wire there and cover it all up with the back seat and there's cushion of foam there so nothing's going to damage your low line converter. As you can see here, it's pretty easy to remove the back seat. All you have to do is lift straight up and it just pops off the clips. There's no bolts or screws or anything holding it down together. Make sure you then slide one end of the RCA cable through the back seat into the trunk so that can hook up to your amp. You plug the other end of the RCA cable into your low line converter and place all the extra RCA wire and all the speaker wire. Have that tucked in underneath the plastic, underneath the door, and then have that run underneath the seat and then you're all set. If you were planning to run an aftermarket wire amp to your stock subwoofers, you would also need to run two sets of speaker wires, one to each individual subwoofer. And you could bridge these two subwoofers together to get it down to 4 ohms. Each individual stock subwoofer is rated at 8 ohms, so you need to bridge it down to 4 ohms so your amp would accept it. And that's pretty much it. Um, here I attached a few short clips of the subwoofers playing music. Ideally, you're going to want to face the subwoofer towards your cabin to get the most bass. I hope you enjoy it.